The U.S. Democratic Party's recent vote on an anti-Semitism resolution revealed deep divides between the young progressive forces in the party and its leadership. Critics have slammed the resolution as failing to address what it was originally intended to do, unequivocally condemn anti-Semitism, stemming from within its own ranks. As such, this begs the question, where is the Democratic Party headed with regards to anti-Semitism, relations with the U.S. Jewish community, and Israel? Here with us to discuss this is Dr. Martin Sherman, director of the Israel Institute for Strategic Studies. Hi, Martin. Welcome. Hi. Thanks for having me. So do you agree with Pre U.S. President Donald Trump's uh, assertion that the vote on the anti-Semitism resolution was disgraceful? Well, I certainly think it's troubling because it's indicative of an ongoing trend which started in Europe and now seems to be moving over to the United States, where people who allegedly profess to liberal values uh, find it more and more acceptable to attack the only democracy in the Middle East, the only uh, Jewish state, and uh, by association, the Jewish uh, communities who are affiliated with them or affiliate themselves with Israel. Um, but, you know, it's easy to bewail this the question is, you know, what can Israel do instead of just you know, complaining? And uh, I, I think Israel has been quite lax in presenting its case over the years, over the decades. Uh, it's, uh, it's allotted uh, ridiculously small amounts of resources to presenting its case. And just to give you a, a, a sense of, uh, of, of uh, scale, if Israel were to allot 1%, of state budget to public diplomacy to presenting its case in the West to young people on campuses across the, uh, across Europe and across the U.S. That would be a billion dollars. With a billion dollars, uh, you can change a lot of minds and win a lot of hearts. But Israel hasn't done that. It's it's uh, invested ridiculously small amounts, and it's allowed its image to become denigrated, and, and that's had a knock-on effect, because if Israel is besmirched. Anyone who associated with them by association is besmirched and then open to the same kind of attacks. Uh, you know, of course, it's, it's, it's not anti-Semitic to criticize Israel. But if ongoing double standards are applied to the Jewish state that are not applied to anyone else, it begins to look like anti-Semitism. And you drew the comparison between Europe and the United States. And I want to read you a segment from Brett Stevens's column in the New York Times. It says something about the progressive movement today, that it has no trouble denouncing Republican racism, real and alleged, every day of the week, but has so much trouble calling out a naked anti-Semite in its own ranks. This is how progressivism becomes Corbynism. It's how the left finds its own path towards legitimizing hate. It's how self-declared anti-fascists develop their own forms of fascism. You know, these are very serious and um, very worrisome statements. And what are your thoughts on this? Well, you know, this has been an ongoing symptom for quite a long time uh, when uh, the left wing criticizes the right wing, its freedom of speech. And when the right wing criticizes the left wing, it's incitement. Mm -hmm. But this, again, is something that, that the right wing or the left or, and Israel itself has allowed to, to grow and spread. It hasn't put its case forcefully enough. And, you know, when you think of it, the, these progressive so-called uh, left-leaning movements and left-leaning individuals, uh, it seems almost paradoxical that they would support the Palestinians rather than Israel because Israel in, in, in many ways is so much closer to their values, the values that they're supposed to cherish than the Palestinians. The Palestinians are basically the antithesis of everything they're supposed to stand for. And I, I think Israel should do, be far more forceful in, in, in bringing out this, this paradox and, and, and making them appear ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, again, I, you know, I don't want to go too far off track, but, but I think the problem started when, when, when Israel basically decided it was going to acknowledge Palestinian statehood. Now, now while that sounds rather far-reaching, far but, but why is it true? Because no responsible government in Israel can adopt a policy that takes the risks that setting up a Palestinian state would entail. And so once you've embraced Palestinian state declaratively, you have a public stated opinion which you can't match with deeds. And so you have this disparity between your declarations and your policy. And so you look mm -hmm. disingenuous and deceitful. And I, I, I think if you, if you go back, you'll find that is the, the source 
of the anti-Israel sentiment that the, that the left wing and the, and the progressives have locked on. Because if you look at Israel's position in the world, even in the days of the recalcitrant rejectionist Yitzhak Shamil, you didn't have the kind of animus and the widespread mm -hmm. uh, hostility that you have today. So this leads to the next question, the future of the Democratic Party. It's not a simple question because we've seen the majority of Jews in America do consider themselves Democrats. So how do you see the future of the Democratic Party and well, I, the I role think, of I, I Jews think, in this I think this that party? depends how, how the traditional Democrats uh, react. Will they allow this, you know, as we see, this, this uh, uh, basically capitulation to the radical left wing that you saw with this uh, motion, mm -hmm. whether they're going to stand up and eject them. Because at some stage, if the kind of phenomena that you're seeing uh, uh, represented by these new radical uh, legislators that have just been voted in, I think more and more traditional Democrats uh, are not going to be able to find their place in the Democratic Party. And you may find a split. You might find the same thing. You know, you're seeing similar things happening in the Labour Party where people are resigning because they can't uh, and they can't uh, reconcile themselves to the kind of trends you have there. And I think Israel has to be far, far more proactive in providing intellectual ammunition to Jewish organizations, to uh, Jewish students on the campuses, far more proactive, pushing forward, you know, trying to create the image of Israel. And, and Israel really should be an, an object of pride because yeah. you, you know it's, it's on the cutting edge of virtually every field of human endeavor, whether it's technology, medicine, water conservation, desalination, you, you name it, Israel's is, mm -hmm. is on the cutting edge. All right, Dr. Martin Sherman, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you for having me.